Let's talk Bitcoin. Not a whole lot to update you guys on Bitcoin here. So Bitcoin again, guys, as we can see, is just essentially pulled back off of this recent high pivot. You can see this trend line. I probably haven't talked to you guys much about this trend line. I do want to show you why, again, this is resistance. It's only, it's not a huge resistance level. I want to be clear on that. But what we can see here is if you look at this base right here and this little area, there was kind of a sideways, up, down, sideways, and then it broke down. And so essentially we've come back to that level right in here, and that's just short-term resistance. Again, I would just say this, is that any pullback to 32, 31,000 is a buying opportunity. As long as we stay here, the risks are to the upside, meaning you can go further to the upside because that spot ETF, you just don't know when it's going to be approved. When it's when it's approved, it's probably going to pop. We'll watch very closely there. CPI data just was released at 8.30 a.m. Let's get right into the data. All right, so what I have here is what I showed yesterday. All right, we talked about the previous data, the forecast, and now we have the actual data here. So let's take a look, right? So if we clean this off, we can clearly see previous CPI uh, month over month core. Look at this, 0.3. We forecast or the market forecasted 0.3. It came in at 0.2. Forecast for month over month CPI non-core was forecast at 0.1. It came in at zero, zero, folks. No change in these goods, this basket of goods that, again, are factored into inflation. No change from last month. The markets loved it. Next, we look at year-over-year -year numbers. Expectations were 4.1%, came in at 4%. CPI year-over-year, -year, expected 3.3, came in at 3.2. Literally every single number came in one-tenth better than expected. One-tenth better, one-tenth better, one-tenth better, one-tenth better. What are the markets doing? They are going like that right now. All right, so again, it's almost <laughs> no no offense to the the calculators here, but it's almost as this if as if this was a little contrived here. I'm not saying it is, but again, interesting to see these numbers all beating by a fraction, but enough to give the market a massive push. Hey, money talkers, it's time for another crypto carnival where we ride the roller coaster of finance news. Buckle up because today we're diving into ETF fever, Bitcoin price predictions, and the market whirlwind. Let's roll. First up, the ETF extravaganza. Bitcoin investors are holding their breath for this SEC's green light on the first U.S. spot Bitcoin ETF. Rumor has it, approval might hit the stage in early 2024. Hold on tight, crypto fans. This could be the game changer we've been waiting for. Now let's talk Bitcoin's price. Last week, Bitcoin hit an 18-month high at $37,970, fueled by BlackRock's other ETF moves. The price has doubled since 2023, but we're still chasing that November 2021 peak. Nine asset giants, including BlackRock and Valkyrie, are on the edge of their seats awaiting SEC approval. Brace yourselves, folks, the Bitcoin price roller coaster is revving up. TikTok, TikTok, it's the spot ETF countdown. If the SEC gives a thumbs up, we might witness a batch approval with multiple ETF listings on the same day. It's a crypto fiesta waiting to happen. Brian Armour from Morningstar is feeling the vibe, saying, I'm more optimistic about a Bitcoin ETF than ever before. Get ready for a potential Bitcoin rally, but keep an eye out for profit collectors too. Stay focused, money talkers. While a spot Bitcoin ETF could be the holy grail for crypto investors, Brian Armour reminds us it's still an extremely volatile and speculative asset. Experts suggest keeping crypto exposure to 1-5% to of your portfolio to dodge the wild market swings. It's a crypto jungle out there, navigate wisely. Now let's consult the Bitcoin price oracle. As Bitcoin hovers around $36,500, traders are making strategic moves ahead of the U.S. CPI inflation data release. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics is dropping knowledge bombs on November 14. Race yourselves for potential market shakeups. The markets are in anticipation mode with a slightly higher inflation figure already priced in. The CPI data is the talk of the town and corporate investors are playing it safe. Bitcoin demand is doing a little dance and large investors have slowed down their moves. Will Bitcoin ride the wave or hit a rough patch? The crypto crystal ball is glowing. In the final countdown, it's all about the CPI data release. If the figures exceed expectations, we might see Bitcoin taking a dip towards $35,000. On the flip side, if it falls short, get ready for a bullish boost pushing Bitcoin to retest $38,000. 
The stakes are high, the drums are rolling. Who's ready for the grand finale? And there you have it, crypto money talkers. The ETF spectacle, Bitcoin's wild ride, and the market drama has been a roller coaster of excitement. Now let's continue our discussion with Gareth. All right, so what we're going to do next, folks, let's take a look here. We're going to get right into the charts and analyze it accordingly. So what we're going to flip over is to the NASDAQ 100. Look at the move on the NASDAQ 100 here pre-market. So huge move up. Initially, yesterday, we basically closed on the markets around 377. We're trading up about $6 on the QQQ. That's a massive move, folks. You're talking close to 2% on the NASDAQ. And again, all the stocks are participating. The big cap, mega cap tech that have already run insane amounts. You have NVIDIA up, Microsoft up, Apple up, Amazon up, all of them across the board. Even Tesla is up this morning. All right, now, what do you guys think? So CPI came in lower than expected. So here's a quiz. What do you think we're seeing on the 10-year yield and the dollar? Which direction is the 10-year yield going? Let's take a look. I hope you guys could guess on this one. We are seeing the 10-year yield collapsing to the downside, right? So essentially, think about it like this. Inflation is coming down better than expected, which means the Fed has the ability to lower rates sooner at least that's the way the market's taking it the fed can lower rates sooner or quicker therefore yields are coming down the market remember the way the correlation works when yields are coming down like this what does the market usually do it usually goes up and we know from just looking at the nasdaq 100 that that's exactly what is happening all right and what about the dollar all right, it was markets rallying. Is there an inverse correlation with the dollar usually? So when the dollar goes down, markets go up, and the answer is yes. So we would assume the dollar on an intraday basis is going down, and look at that, folks. That is a big-time drop. So again, as the dollar comes down, it also helps the equity markets go up, and that, again, is what we're seeing pre-market. Now, Gold is up. Bitcoin getting a bounce. But again, we know that Bitcoin's trading more on kind of the, the spot ETF stuff. But gold is getting a big bounce. Silver's up big because when the dollar goes down, other commodities tend to go up. Remember, they're traded in terms of dollars. So weaker dollar, higher price in gold. We'll take a look at gold in just one second. Let's go to the S&P 500 here. This is the SPY tracking ETF for the S&P 500. Same result as the NASDAQ. Big, big pop. We are starting to pull back just a shade here. But nonetheless, I mean, that is a huge move, folks. About 1.3 to 1.4% on the S&P right now if the markets were to open this second. All right, now, what we need to do is we need to look at daily charts. So let's flip back to the dailies. We've looked at the intraday. We know what the market is doing on an intraday pre-market basis. Now we need to start looking and saying, okay, well, if the spiders are now trading, we closed yesterday at 440. If we're now trading at 446, that's up here. Where are the key levels of resistance? Because certainly we are now easily above this downsloping trend line. Now, I will say this. So this is a level that coming into today we knew was pivotal, right? So again, pivot high on the spiders to pivot high here. And this is actually adjusted. So hang on one second. I want to make sure we keep this uh, correct. So let me take away earnings adjusted. There it is. It's it's essentially the same thing, but I always like to keep it without adjusting for the uh, dividends. Excuse me, the dividends. Either way, the line's essentially the same here as we can see right there. And we were coming right into this level here. All right. So again, right into the level and we can clearly see pivot to pivot to pivot to pivot. And now we are above this line. Now, the first thing we have to remember is the markets haven't even opened yet. We must see where the markets close because it's possible we could open up here and we could eventually make our way back down to that trend line. Not very likely. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Not very likely, but it is always a possibility, especially on options expiration week when weird things can happen because of the institutional involvement. All right, but let's just say we continue to move up. Where is your next level on the SPY? And the answer is we have a gap fill at 450 on the spiders. 450 on the spiders, flipping that over here, we can clearly see this would be your next point of intrigue right at 450, even number right there. So right now, pre-market, we're about 446. So if we continue to move up, gap fill pivot high right here at 450 on the SPY. That's your next level to watch. If you enjoyed the video, 
don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more daily updates. Remember, knowledge is power, and we're here to empower you on your financial journey. Until next time, happy investing.